Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kate Thin. I upload a whole bunch of different types of videos on this channel, mainly surrounding true crime and psychological cases, as well as a little bit of university and lifestyle sprinkled in where I can. So today I'm back and I'm going to be discussing the case of the murder of Helen Bailey. Now Helen Bailey was a successful young adult and children book author and she was sadly murdered um, and we'll go into a little bit about the case, everything. So if you want to hear a little bit about the death and also the investigation behind it, then keep on watching. But as always, I'm going to just put in a little bit of a disclaimer here. There will always be a disclaimer in the description, but I just have to put this in here just in case any of you aren't aware. But I apologise in advance if I get anything wrong, if I leave anything out, or if I mispronounce anything. I'm not trying to do anyone an injustice and I'm not trying to offend anyone. I'm simply here for educational purposes, just relaying information that I found on the internet. I'm not claiming to be an expert in any of these cases. Like I said, I'm just sharing with you what I have myself have found online. Helen Bailey was a successful British author. Like I said, she was uh, really successful in her Genre. She wrote a number of books in the children's fiction and young adult fiction genre. Uh, she had quite a famous uh, selection of work. She had released quite a famous book series called the Electorate Brown series and so she was just very very good at what she did. Helen Bailey was born on the 22nd of August 1964 in a place just outside of Newcastle upon Tyne and this is where she lived for the majority of her early life. When she was 18 years old she moved out to London to study at the university so she wanted to study physiology at Thames Polytechnic University and she had hopes of a career in forensic science. But when it came to selecting her field of focus for her postgraduate research, so after you finish university, you go on to postgrad research. And when it came to time when she decided to like focus and narrow down her field at this point, she focused on a local teaching hospital. But from here, her career changed course. She decided that she wanted to go forward in a career in media as opposed to forensic science. She worked for quite a few well-known franchises. She did quite well. She worked on licensing of things like Rugrats and Nintendo, which is really, really quite cool. In the year 1989, Helen Bailey met a man named John Sinveld, and he was the head of a licensing rights company in London. And then in the year 1996, the couple were married. In the year 2008, Helen wrote the first of what would become a very successful book series. It was called The Crazy World of Electra Brown. She then released two more books in the series in that same year, two more in 2009, and then one more in the year 2010. The Electra Brown series wasn't her only piece of work. She also worked on books in the Topaz series, Felicity Wishes series, and more. And by the end of her life, I have written here, she'd written a total of 22 published books which is incredible. She was an amazingly talented woman. And then in the year 2011, Helen Bailey suffered a great tragedy when her and her husband were holidaying in Barbados. Sadly, her husband was out swimming when he drowned and lost his life. Her next piece of published work following the death of her husband was one that reflected her pain that she had suffered as a result of her loss. And it kind of stemmed around this idea of how to cope with loss, how to deal with bereavement and explored a lot of her experience herself. So it was obviously quite a change from the typical books that she'd write, but it was definitely quite a serious book that she had ideally helped to sort of share what she had been through and help others. Later on in that year, Helen Bailey began a relationship with a new man. His name was Ian Stewart. Ian was a widower himself, so they had that in common, and he also had two sons. On April the 11th, 2016, Helen Bailey left her home in Royston, Hertfordshire to walk her dog. She never returned home and a note was later found in her home that said she would be staying in a holiday home that her family owned in Broadstairs in Kent. But when this note was found and her family were alerted of this, they themselves checked on whether there was anyone staying in their family home in Kent and found that she hadn't arrived there, she hadn't planned to be there at any point. There was no sign of Helen whatsoever. And it was at this point that Helen Bailey was reported as officially missing. As I'm sure you can imagine, her family members were extremely, extremely concerned and they believed that it was extremely out of character for her not to at least check in with them. In July of that year, investigators released the information that they had arrested a 55-year-old man who was living in Royston, where Helen's home was, 
uh, they decided they would arrest him in order to question him as they believed he had something to do with Helen's disappearance. However, he was never charged with anything and he was released upon being cleared of any any sort of suspect or having anything to do with the case. And then on the 15th of July that same year, a huge break in the case came about when local police announced that they had discovered a set of human remains and a set of dog remains in the septic tank on Helen's property. And it was at this point that police were adamant that Helen's partner, Ian Stewart, had been the one to blame for her, her disappearance and ultimately her death and so he was arrested. And then on July 16th, 2016, Ian Stewart was charged with murder, perverting the course of justice and preventing a lawful burial. On 12th of October, he pleaded not guilty and a trial was set for January the following year. During the trial, the prosecution argued that Ian had been secretly drugging Helen for months before her disappearance, up until the point where he suffocated her in April intentionally with the intent of ending her life. They claimed that it was extremely likely that Helen would have been alive when he dumped her in the septic tank in her property. They then went on to claim that the following day after murdering Helen and leaving her in the septic tank, he visited the holiday home that Helen had claimed that she was staying in in the note and connected her phone to the Wi-Fi of the holiday home just so that if investigators at any point looked up her phone records to see if they could sort of trace where she'd been it would show that she was in fact in the holiday home in Kent. The day that Helen had been reported missing it's also reported that Ian allegedly tried to sell a flat that Helen owned by telling the solicitor that Helen was suddenly too unwell to be there in person and so she'd given her blessing for Ian to be the one to put the property on sale. On this day, Ian Stewart had also amended a direct debit that the couple had set up when they became kind of living partners. The original direct debit was set from Helen's bank account to transfer £600 a month into their joint bank account. However, on this day, Ian changed it to transfer £4,000 a month to their joint bank account, which obviously he had access to. As well as this, I have written here that in response to Helen's death, Ian Stewart would receive the estate in Helen's name, which was worth £3.4 million, as well as a huge payout from her life insurance policy. So, as it seems, Ian Stewart has a lot to gain from his partner's death. The prosecution during the trial included a recording of a phone call that Ian had placed to the police department when they reported her as missing. During the clip, the jury heard Ian fail to be able to describe the colour of his partner's eyes, uh, fail to recall her mobile number or even her birthday, and he couldn't provide the operator with the address of the holiday home in Kent that she was allegedly staying in, which all of this seems like something you should be able to do if uh, your partner, your living partner, your long-term partner went missing. During the trial, Helen's mother reported a uh, previous concern of Helen's welfare, her well-being, as she appeared to be in a gradually deteriorating state every time she saw her. And this was later explained by the sleeping pills that were found in her system and allegedly ones that Ian had been dosing her with. In response to all of these claims put forward by the prosecution, Ian simply said that he was not guilty of Helen Bailey's murder, um, but rather Helen and their dog had been kidnapped by two men that he had met named Nick and Joe. He'd apparently been contacted by these two mysterious men and they had demanded a ransom of £500,000 for Helen's safe return and that he hadn't told the investigators at the time for fear of Helen's safety. These men were later identified as Nick Cook, who was Ian's neighbour, and uh, Joe Capulio, Capulio, Cipulio, a man that he knew from his previous home, uh, his previous address before that. But then in court, Ian admitted to knowing these two men, but they weren't the men that kidnapped Helen, so already he had contradicted himself quite quickly. There had been a number of eyewitnesses in the initial um, investigation that claimed to have seen Helen walking her dog that day, which would suggest that she had made it out of the house that day with her dog. However, they all provided completely contradicting times and contradicting locations, so it was kind of just assumed that in all likelihood these weren't very factful um, and that people may be been mistaken, so there wasn't enough to build a case from this. And then on February 22nd, 2017, Ian Stewart was found guilty of the murder of Helen Bailey and was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum term of 34 years. And more recently, Ian Stewart was also found guilty of murdering his first wife named Diane Stewart 
in 2010. Diane's death had initially been ruled as an accident, most likely caused by her epilepsy. But upon the investigation into Ian Stewart because of Helen Bailey's death, investigators decided to sort of look up Diane's death in a little bit more detail and as a result of re-examination they found evidence to prove that Ian Stewart had also murdered both wives. So yeah that is the case of Helen Bailey's death. I haven't really done a solved case in a little while, sometimes they are harder to find and harder to uh, research. So let me know if you want me to try and do more solved cases, if you have any in particular that you'd like me to research then please leave them down below or DM me, they would be super helpful, they aren't always the easiest to research. Um, but I hope you found this interesting and I will see you guys very soon for another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.